Okay, so let's do a quick turntable in Blender. So I want to preface this by saying that each frame is going to be exported as a single PNG. So there's going to be a file with 250 frames. So once I have those frames, I can bring it into Final Cut Pro. That's what I use to edit videos, any sort of video editing software, add all those frames, merge them all together, and then speed it up. I usually speed it up by like 6,000%. I'll show you, I'll show you how I do it in, in Final Cut Pro as well. So the first question is what size do I want to do this? So right now, if we go to this little printer here, this is the resolution and it's pretty big. So it'd be, it'd be good for 4k. It's just going to take a long time, unfortunately. So I think I'm just going to set it to vertical HD. So this is 1080 by 1920. I think that's better and it'll be, it'll be faster. First, let's zoom in. So I'm going to go to my camera and zoom in a little bit like so and I want to move my camera over a pinch just so the character is in the middle so I'm gonna hit one on this screen okay we'll go to our little character here and he's he's directly in the middle and what I mean by that is you can see the gizmo is right here so this is like the middle of see these the green line and the red line the character is directly in the middle, which is perfect. So when I go shift A and I add an empty, I'm going to add a cube and I'm going to move the cube up. Okay. So all I did was add this empty, which is just a, a cube. It's not really a shape. It's just like the outline of a shape. Okay, I'll hit one again. So you can scale this so that it fits your character, although it doesn't really make that much of a difference. So I'll scale it, I'll make it a little bit bigger, and then I'll turn to the side and just squeeze it in so it's the size of the character or so. Perfect, so here's the empty. This is where it showed up. So I'm just gonna label this um, uh, let's see, A spin the reason why i call it a spin is i'm used to it being alphabetical even though it's not i'm going to add that to the ghosty can i put it can i put it on top no i guess i can't so now what what we need to do is parent all of these parts to this empty so essentially we're going to attach all of these parts okay so i hit shift and i selected all of these parts of course you could do it this way too you can hit shift and select everything, but that's a little slow. So I'm just gonna hit shift and select everything here. And then I'm gonna select this last. So I'm gonna hit control and then tap spin. So you can see all of these are kind of a dark orange and this is a light orange because that's the last thing that we selected. Same thing with these lines around it. All these are dark orange. The last thing we selected is the empty and that's a lighter orange. Control P, set to parent, keep transform boom so now everything is parented to this spin so we can collapse that so now so there we have our spin so if you look underneath this is the dope sheet which is kind of similar to the timeline i don't really use it i actually use i prefer the timeline that way you can see starting at frame one and at eight uh, frame 250. Uh, if you don't see this window here Let's see, how can I, uh, so if for some reason, like you don't see a window there, you can go to the corners, any of the corners where you see this crosshair and just pull it up like that. And that, that's how you make a new window. And if you want to get rid of one, you just go to the corner and you drag on top, but it has to be like the same size. It's a bit weird. Anyway, so we'll do that. We'll tap here, we'll go to the timeline. And here's our timeline. So all we have to do, remember we have this A spin selected. This is frame one. Let's pull out these options here. So just pull out this little side panel. Let's go to item. Let's go to Z, uh, I. So we go to the Z and we hit I on the keyboard. That adds a keyframe. So now we'll go to our last frame oh, which you can't see there you go let me get rid of this get rid of this 
Okay, so now we're on the last frame. We'll go here and do 360. Okay, now it's orange, so make sure you hover over it and hit I. So it's yellow, and now we have two keyframes, and now he is spinning like he is supposed to be spinning. Perfect. Okay, so we go back to this little camera. Right now, I have it at 350, which is fine. When I go to the little printer, 1080, yep. Uh, this, I'm just gonna put 230, doesn't need to be 120. So that's fine. Scroll down, and this is the output, this is important. So I'm gonna tap this folder. I'm gonna go into wherever you want this to go. I usually do it in a folder called Animation Link. I'll make a new folder. Ghosty Turntable 1. Uh, let's do zero. Because I made like four different versions of this, so this is gonna be the first one. So we'll accept. So now that's where it's gonna go. Everything looks good. All these are on and they're supposed to be on. Perfect. So now all we have to do is go to render and render animation. Okay, so now it's just gonna render out each frame. And actually, I'm gonna stop this. Uh, this is just a little extra, a little extra bit. So I'm gonna select both of these and see how we have two of these similar windows. For this one, I'm gonna go to the graph editor. So I've selected both of these frames. And now I'm gonna go to this part, which is the graph editor, view, frame selected. Okay, I'm just gonna slide this back because it's confusing. So now I've frame selected. So these are the two that I'm looking at now. These are the two frames. So this curve, starting out a little slow, steady, 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 steady slow here. So that's how the animation is gonna move. So let's just play that. Steady, 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 steady. And then slows to a stop. It's not bad. It's a little slow. Whoops. Hit Control Z. I'm going to take this last one and bring it to maybe 160. And let's see. It's not bad. Still a little slow. So now I'm going to go back to the, I'm going to select both of these go back to the graph editor. If I pull this out, you can see what's happening with the arch. And if I go to the bottom, whoops, I don't know, it's always so hard just to get, there we go. You wanna get those little, those little, et, ay, so annoying. They make it very difficult to just select those little points. This is, Oh, yeah. Maybe it's not possible. There we go. So all I'm trying to do is adjust this curve and it does different things. So now let's look at it. It's good. It's just a little slow. So I'm going to move this down to 100. Okay. It's not bad. Let's go to 120. Okay, that looks good actually. All right, that looks nice. So I'm going to change the end to 120. Beautiful. That looks great. So that's what I'm going to render. It just adds a little something, a little something, something. So let's render animation. And I didn't change the path, so it's just gonna go right over those last animations, which is fine. All right, so this is frame 120. This is the last frame. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And do I wanna save it? I guess I'll go ahead and save it. So now I'll just minimize that and I'll show you the files on the computer. 
So I put them in animation link. Here's ghosty TT. So here's all the images. So now I can actually switch to my Mac screen and then I can just find those files. Okay, and here I have all of those files here. I'll just hit name. So I'll just select them all. I'll hit control C. That way that's just gonna copy them. So this is actually the, the video that I'm editing right now, which is funny. So this is the ending. And I didn't change the path, so it's just gonna go right over those last animations, which is fine. Since I'm gonna include this in this video, I'm gonna tap where I want it. This so I'm in Final Cut Pro. You can do it most likely with any video editing software. I'm just gonna hit Control V so I can paste all of those frames into this timeline. Oh, the only step that I forgot in between is I usually, right now I'm drawing them from the PC. I usually drag them over to the computer and then drag them into Final Cut Pro because right now it's kind of like seeing the files on the other computer, so it's a bit slower. But anyway, let's just select all of those images. So here's the last image. So now I'll hit Command G to make them all, or make them all one video clip. So here it is as one video clip, um, but if you play it, it's gonna be really, really slow. So now we just tap on the, cl the clip. I'll hit R, and here I'm just gonna do 6,000, so it's gonna speed it up 6,000%, and it's gonna be really tiny. I'll just delete this extra space, and now we have our animation. So this was the first one that I was working on. So we'll go back to Blender. Okay, so this one is good. So now I'm gonna open up uh, Ghosty 1. He's gonna look a little different. So this is the glow. If you wanna know how to do the glow, you just go over here to your materials. So this material, I just set an emission. So you just go, go down to emission and then you can set the color here and you can set the strength here and it will glow. I can make it really bright or I can put it back to one. And you can change the color if you want to. But I think he looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. The only thing I'm gonna change Let's see, I'm gonna change this to vertical HD. I'm gonna change this to 30 and then I'll go down and I need to set a new location, new folder. And this is gonna be ghosty one dark. And that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to repeat adding the empty and doing a turntable for this guy. And I have three other ones that I'm going to do. Uh, so I'll show you those at the end of this video as well. But that's about it. Thanks for checking me out. Let me know if this was helpful. Let me know if you ran into any issues. I'm happy to help. Keep drawing. Keep sculpting. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to go more in depth, then definitely check out my Skillshare classes where I am a top teacher. I have about 50 classes, both Procreate and Nomad Sculpt. I also have a few classes on Udemy. So if you want to learn more or you just like my style, you like the way I teach, you want to support me, those are some other places that you can do it. Thanks again. Keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll see you all in the next video.